Whoa. It's an airport. In a sand spotter video. In 2020. As you let that sink in, I'd like to give huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. This is just so weird. Hey everyone, my name is Scott. I'm the guy typing furiously over at sandspotter.com and remember when I used to make airline review videos? Those were the days. Flying around the world without masks and touching literally everything in sight like a curious and deviant two-year-old seems so otherworldly to me now. How long is it going to be until I get to walk into an airport again and embarrass myself pretending to be an expert traveler? I'm not sure, but I do know that today isn't that day. It just doesn't feel quite right yet. I'm going home. One of the things that I've been doing to occupy my time on the ground over the past seven months or so is to get back into illustrating airplanes. I used to do this all the time, but it tapered off once I started doing airline reviews. Now, thanks to being kicked square in the nuts by COVID-19, my illustration and design skills are all I've got to put food on the table until the travel industry recovers. Speaking of illustration work and reverting back to old stuff, let's get right to the point of this video. The Boeing 707. More specifically, what would it actually look like if Boeing was still producing it today? I know, it's silly to think that Boeing would be foolish enough to extend the life of an aircraft type beyond 50 years. I mean, that's like taking an aircraft designed in the 1960s, throwing new engines on it, calling it a MAX, and convincing the world that it's the future of aviation. Oh, wait. So bear with me here. Let's say, just for kicks, that Boeing never stopped making the 707. It was a revolutionary aircraft for its time, and Boeing being Boeing, decided that they'd milk it for all it's worth and tried to sell it today as a legitimate A321LR competitor. Let's even pretend that, if it was still in production, it would be called the Boeing 707 MAX. Only because it's entertaining to make fun of the 737, of course. What would this look like? To illustrate this as simply as possible, I'm going to take an illustration of a 707 that I made last year and work from that. Oh, and if you're easily triggered by watching someone hack up a classic 707, I'd highly recommend scanning your immediate environment for hard objects you can throw your phone into. I'm warning you now, I'm sparing no mercy when it comes to this redesign. But first, before I start hacking up a classic design, how weird is it to see me back inside an airport again? Sure as heck felt weird. Anyway, I've got my mask and Surfshark to help keep me safe. While my mask is helping me to keep from spreading cooties onto strangers, I'm using Surfshark to prevent cooties from infecting my phone. You've probably heard me explain this before, but it's worth repeating. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN that will automatically filter all the data that is transmitted to and from your devices through a secure tunnel. Everything is encrypted, your data is secure, and, well, cooties are a non-issue, the digital kind, at least. Did you know that Surfshark will also unlock blocked regional content? Of course you didn't. That's why I'm mentioning it. Surfshark will allow you to virtually change your location, allowing you to access blocked content that isn't available in your country. Are you in the US and sick of worrying about the on-again, off-again shutdown of TikTok? With Surfshark, simply change your location and you'll have access to it forever, no matter what happens. Anyway, effective immediately, you can get Surfshark for 83% off, plus three months extra for free by using the link in the description below. Just remember to use the promo code SCOTT, because otherwise, no more WAP challenge videos for you. Looking at the existing design of the 707, there are only a few things that stand out to me as candidates for modification. First of all, the engines have to go. 
The vertical stabilizer is whack, and that wing is in desperate need of a carbon composite makeover with blended winglets. As far as the fuselage goes, I think it's okay to keep it largely intact. The APU needs modernizing, of course, so that will change the shape of the tail cone just slightly. Speaking of airplane APUs and tail cones, is it immature of me to not to be able to resist thoughts of buttholes whenever I see one? Anyone who said yes is wrong, by the way. Moving up to the vertical stabilizer, let's round it off a bit and, I hate to say it, remove that awesome looking antenna on the leading edge. See? I told you this was going to be brutal. I'm also going to give the vertical stabilizer a slightly steeper angle. Not only because it looks more modern, but also because anyone watching this video without audio will think that I'm an expert in aerodynamics or something and that I actually know what I'm talking about. Okay, now it's getting serious. What would Boeing 707 MAX engines and wings look like? Well, it's complicated. Starting with the engines first, all you Boeing 707 purists out there will be relieved to know that I'm staying with the four engine layout. Not only because it makes sense, of course, but mostly because it looks cool. Well, that and the fact that this would basically just be a goofy looking 757. Not only that, the entire comment section below would be full of insults reminding me that I am a moron and that this is just a goofy looking 757. Despite how uneconomical this four engine design proposal may be, I'm sticking with it. Okay, so now that we have an environmentally irresponsible engine set up in place, let's try to make up for it with a super efficient wing design. What you can't see is my proposal for a fully carbon composite wing structure that will bend and flex under load, just like how the 787 wing works. It's hard to illustrate in static form like this, but trust me, it's there. On a side note, that's one of the most awesome things about being an illustrator and designer. You don't actually have to figure out how stuff works. You just have to propose something cool, and if you can convince your clients that it's a really good idea, they'll pay you well and ask you to draw more stuff for them. It's almost better than making airline reviews on YouTube. So now that we've got all the major pieces in place, it's time to figure out all the little details. For example, what would the landing gear of a modern Boeing 707 look like? Honestly, I don't think there would be much of a difference compared to the original design. It would need to be taller, of course, as those new high output engines are going to need some room to work. I'm sticking with the double bogey design for the main gear, and obviously the single bogey for the front, with composite materials that you can't see, of course. Trust me, it's an amazing lightweight design that will revolutionize the ground performance of this aircraft. Finally, I am proposing a simpler design for the wing box. The original 707 design looks to be a convoluted mess of different material types and unnecessary sectioning, so Sandspotter Design Services to the rescue. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present to you the Boeing 707 MAX, a direct competitor to the Airbus A321LR, and the A321neo, and the 737 MAX, and probably a lot of other aircraft as well, depending on how airlines would choose to use it. The good thing is that I don't have to worry about any of this, as there probably isn't an airline on this planet that would choose to use a modern Boeing 707. The four engine layout is its biggest drawback, as well as its outdated skeleton and inefficient aerodynamics. There's no way Boeing could make money keeping this platform alive, but it was fun to throw together this design proposal and say, what if? <laughs> Even better, all the people who watch this video without audio probably thinks that there is a new Boeing 707 coming out and that I'm an engineering genius. 
if they only knew. Anyway, that's it from me this week. Maybe I'll have the desire to get back in the air soon, and I can get back to the way things used to be. If you're sick of waiting, I have a really good solution for you. Check out the Moments in the Sky YouTube channel. Neil, the guy who runs it, has returned to the skies and is making really great flight videos again. Head on over there, watch some of his latest content, and be sure to remind everyone how lame Sandspotter has become in the comments section. I'd also recommend taking a moment to help me appreciate all of my patrons. Is this a fine looking group of people or what? Josh Beaumont, Aaron Slater, Riley Wingo, and everyone else, you're all amazing folks who I just can't thank enough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and who knows, maybe next week I'll actually go deeper into the airport. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.